depending on where you are. Welcome to our webinar on statistics and data preparation and presentation. My name is Tomoiki Suzuki, and I am a business development director of AJE, part of Spriga Nature. I'm honored to be your host and the moderator of the webinar today. This webinar is the fifth in the 2023 Japan webinar series, which is planned throughout the year. Once a month, we plan to hold a one hour seminar on a topic related to academic publishing and scholarly research, picking up on issues that researchers face every day. We will be offering a special benefit to all attendees each year, each time. And we would be grateful if you could join us as many times as you can. So before we begin today's online webinar, I would like to go over a couple of housekeeping items with you. Firstly, the webinar is scheduled to be for an hour. The presentation will last 40 minutes, followed by a 15 minutes Q&A session. Please note that your microphone and the camera have been set to be turned off. This is to minimize background noise and the visual disruptions, allowing everyone to focus on the presentation. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them in the Q&A box. We will do our best to answer as many questions as possible during the Q&A session at the end. Please do not hesitate to ask questions or share your concerns you may have, as it provides valuable feedback for us. Recording or taking screenshots of the webinar requires permission from the organizer. While personal learning and reference purposes are encouraged, please refrain from sharing or distributing the content without permission. Please ensure a stable internet connection as much as possible. If you experience any connection issues during the webinar, please attempt to reconnect. Clearing internet browsers, cache and cookies may also be helpful in resolving any issues. Lastly, please note that this seminar will be recorded and distribute it at a later date. The topic of this seminar is statistics and data preparation and presentation. Special age, the significance of statistics and effective data preparation and presentation cannot be overstated. The form of the foundation, APOM, the groundbreaking discoveries are made, empowering researchers to draw meaningful conclusion and communicate their findings with clarity and precision. Throughout this webinar, we will explore complexities of statistical analysis, delve into the process of preparing data and discover techniques for pre presenting data in a compelling manner. Now, let me introduce our esteemed presenter for today's webinar, Dalko Medin. Dalko is a science mentor, biomedical data science instructor, and developer of data science curriculums. With expertise in biostatistics, As a data scientist, Dalco has collaborated with research companies and academic institutions specializing in machine learning and AI development. We are honored to have Dalco share his in. Okay. So please join me in welcoming Dalco Melding and over to you, Dalco.
Thank you very much, Tomo. Uh, it's really a pleasure to join you in today's webinar. And I would also like to welcome all the participants uh, today. Today, we will be discussing about uh, various aspects uh, of data science and statistics and uh, how these uh, powerful, powerful uh, branches of science are uh, used in research today. So this webinar is not meant just for people interested uh, only in statistics and data science. It's uh, meant for all the researchers that uh, can utilize powerful statistical tools and ways data is presented in their research. Also, on the other hand, participants who are interested in advancing their statistical and data science knowledge, uh, this webinar could also be very interesting uh, for them. So the first question that comes to our mind is why do we need statistics and how do we use it? First logical answer is to answer the research questions. So we use statistics to help us find different answers for research hypotheses, research ideas, any research question in general that can be answered throughout the research implementation, research procedures, and in the end, publication of research results. Statistics is used to gain new insights from the data. So if we were to look at the data in a form of a table, numbers, other different formats, we could get some insights. But when we apply specific statistical methods, then we can gain additional insights and facilitate the process of finding relevant results using the research data. To simplify the interpretation of these insights, we need to use specific methods. And these methods are meant in the end to make this sometimes very complicated process of collecting the data then drawing conclusions from that data, uh, increasing the value that we can get from the data. Very simple. Of course, we heard about statistics uh, in various forms. A lot of those forms are related to numbers, graphs, and uh, one thing which is specific for statistics, even though many, many have a different opinion and consider statistics to be abstract, a form of presenting data with numbers, statistics is actually quite uh, different in reality. It is a very, very specific branch of science, which is applied and practical and basically, statistics is meant to help actual real research questions. It is generally related to real research problems, to real measurements, and the ways we can use statistics to help us with that research. Obviously, one of the main aspects of statistics is also how to be objective how to have a standard way of reporting the research results so that we can compare the research later with other authors and have the same way of using similar methods, similar ways of comparable, comparable metrics and units. In the end, this enables researchers to 
improve the quality of their work to not just increase the objectiveness and uh, the way data is communicated, but also, as I said, to improve the overall quality of the work. In the end, we can use statistics to identify predictors and risk factors in various future events. So it's not related only to present research. We can use statistics to improve even what we can forecast, predict in the future. And obviously, taking into consideration all these details, statistics is one of the main tools used by various companies, researchers, individuals to improve their decision-making process. So we can use statistics to help us make decisions too. So this is a very simplified graph that shows how statistical methods have their very, very specific place in almost any research. According to my experience, more than 90% researchers will need statistics in some form to either analyze their data, communicate their data, derive certain results from their data, and in the end, of course, uh, publish manuscripts uh, in different journals, communicate their research with stakeholders and uh, research audience and research community in general. When we, when we envision what is the main approach of statistics, it's not, it's not numbers, it's not graphs, it's not uh, any specific form of uh, dealing with data and results. It is actually improving the quality of research. So that is one of the main aspects of what statistics is uh, always, always uh, bound to in terms of research. So we use those statistical methods to have a higher quality way of working with data, analyzing data, reporting data, communicating research. Another aspect is explainability. So statistics is always about trying to explain to the maximal possible extent everything that could be explained. This is important in many areas of science. So from social science to business science to life science, where it's especially important in areas like biomedicine, it is always important to try to explain the results and have a very clear communication of what those results are, how much can we trust them, and what is the main focus of the results. In the end, as I mentioned, one of the main aspects of how to use statistics well is to have valid results. So we also use statistics to validate the results, to validate the data, to validate the hypothesis or reject the hypothesis. So these three aspects are actually main approaches of statistics. And that is why statistics is very useful in research and needed in majority of research areas because we use it to improve the quality, to explain the results in the best possible way and also to validate the research. So 
data presentation is obviously something which is very, very frequently used in statistics. And we use data presentation to answer the research questions, as I mentioned before. But instead of using different methods like we had in the main statistical uh, analysis, data presentation itself is more about communicating the results. So communicating the results that we already created using statistical analysis. Communicating the results is very important. In fact, it is as important as deriving those results using analysis. If the results are communicated in a bad way, then the results will not have the impact they're meant to have or that they deserve to have if we communicate the data in a better, high quality, objective way. Also, data presentation is vital in making research easier to understand. Many research areas are uh, are accompanied with high complexity. Sometimes it is difficult for readers to easily understand different aspects of research, different aspects of data, different results. Using a right approach when presenting the data, we can facilitate the process of understanding for any research reader or even non-researchers. So one of the main goals of having a good data presentation is how would you present your research results, let's say, to a non-researcher? If a non-researcher can understand it, then the data presentation is good and the approach is right. So that, that is one of the best practices that I always advise researchers to try to imagine how would they explain the results to a non-researcher. If they can do that, then they're on the right path, I would say. In the end, we use data presentation to improve the interpretation, right? So it's much easier if we have good data visualizations that are very clear, easy to understand. It's much easier for us to interpret the results in the end. As mentioned before, data presentation together with statistical analysis is one of the main tools used to facilitate the decision-making process in research. Let's take an example of uh, pharmaceutical industry. So statistical analysis that are conducted in different clinical trials can be used to make different decisions by regulatory agencies whether certain uh, biologicals are acceptable or not in that area of uh, pharmaceutical research. There are many other uh, areas, of course, from business decisions that can be based on different statistical results or social science decisions and many others. So what is the best way to look at best practices when presenting data. Obviously, the pr data presentations should be complete. So it is never a good practice to take parts of the data without reporting the complete data. So it is always advised to try to have as complete as possible data presentation. By ensuring that it's complete, it should also be information rich. So information rich means that presenting as much as possible information in a single graph, in a single table, or other uh, forms of data presentation. As mentioned before, statistics and data, pre data presentation they are generally always about being objective. So this is one of the most important aspects, being objective, 
and at the same time being uh being simple or having a simplistic approach in presenting the data so various aspects if the data is, data presentation is simplistic then it will be easier to understand for everyone and on the other hand if it's objective if it's complete then it is credible it is trustworthy and that is another very important aspect very frequently especially today when a lot of data is created in digital form researchers have the opportunity to work with large amounts of data and this means that we need specific methods that are going to simplify all the complexity that is in this large amount of data and make it more intuitive for us to find different patterns in the data to make it more intuitive to present this large amount of data i'm providing here one example where gene expressions a lot of different gene expressions and a lot of different samples where those gene expressions are analyzed are presented on a single heat map so if we were to look at the data for these samples individually it would be very difficult to draw conclusions from this data but if we present it like this in a heat map where the color is representing the gene expression level so the stronger the blue color here for example the stronger the gene expression level we can easily identify patterns observe everything visually and aggregate all the data into one plot so that is the that is one way how data presentation can help us analyze highly complex data and present it in a simple way that is easy for everyone to understand as you saw from the example before data visualization is the key to effectively presenting the data here's another example where bar plots are used to show multiple aspects of the data in this example we have five items and the height of the bar plot can represent the values of those five items but at the same time we have green blue and dark blue color in this case which also show another aspect how with within each of those bars we have differences in the data so at the same time we can compare these items to each other we can compare differences within the items and we can also observe the trend how these items are increasing over time so this is a good example of how a data visualization can be used to represent multiple aspects in the in the data not just one aspect but multiple aspects at the same time that means being information rich while at the same time using a very simple visualization so simple bar plots simple polygons used to represent various information from the data here is another example of how we can include multiple angles into representing the data in this case the analysis is about the wine and the chemical composition of the wine so we have flavonoids and uh, proanthocyanins which is less, less relevant uh, in terms of data visualization in this moment but if you observe this visualization you can see that there is a scatter plot with these points uh, in the center and on top and on the right there are density plots so we are actually representing multiple angles individual points on the scatter plot 
different colors for different types of wine, different densities on top and on the right. So this enriches the data presentation by adding multiple angles of uh, data visualization. This brings us to the next very specific topic, that every result from research, every insight that we can derive from research generally always has multiple angles of being presented and also multiple research angles it can be interpreted. This is why it's always important to observe the context in every research, in every research result. The result itself is not the full presentation of a research aspect. There is always context. It is always important to observe and analyze various other aspects, as well as the references, as well as the literature, and then make a quality research discussion about any research result. Now, if we summarize various aspects that I was mentioning, we can see that there are actually three main areas that are relevant to using statistics and data science in a high quality manner that can improve not just the research interpretation, not just analyzing the data, but also how we how other readers will perceive the results of your research, how easy it will be for audience to understand your research, and most importantly, probably, even though all these other aspects are very important, but for me personally, most importantly, the research will have higher quality, it will be objective, it will be enriched with results. And uh, when we sum all this together, we can see why statistics is very important in majority, in vast majority of today's scientific uh, areas. Majority of researchers will, in some uh, time in their career, need some statistical analysis and will need to understand it. In my opinion, it is very important to understand these aspects in detail. So when we say data, data are not just numbers. There are always specific measurements, specific ways of collecting the data, understanding what this data means. So it is always good to understand not just the research questions. That, I mean, understanding the research questions and hypothesis is paramount, but it is always important to understand the data that we get in that research too. If we don't understand the data, we cannot understand the research questions effectively. To be able to turn this data into value, to derive insights from the data, and of course, in the end, answer those research questions, we need to deploy or implement certain statistical methods. So we need to choose the right method. Every statistical method is specific. Not all statistical methods are meant for all the data. So different types of data, different statistical methods, different research questions, different statistical methods. So researchers must also understand this. This is not specific only for statisticians or biostatisticians or data analysts. 
statistics is pretty much needed in majority of research areas and for majority of researchers. In fact, it is more needed if we look at the sheer quantification of where statistics is used, it is used more by non-statisticians non than it is by statisticians, right? So just by, uh, just by the sheer amount of scientific areas where statistics is deployed. And that is why I'm saying this is not only for statisticians, this is not only for analysts, it's actually more important for other domain researchers because in most of those domains, the researchers will need statistics at some point. And understanding it, understanding the methods, and what these methods tell us is vital for their research in almost any domain. In the end, another good example is the interpretation. How do we interpret the results? If we don't understand the statistics, how can we interpret it? So we need to understand it in detail to be able to interpret the results in any research area. This means that it is never good to be superficial when uh, presenting results, when uh, writing manuscripts in different research areas, when writing discussions, when writing conclusions. It is always advised to understand everything that's behind those results, right? So it is always advised to try to understand. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it requires less, sometimes more time, but it's always important to understand the results in detail. To understand the results, we need to understand what created, what derived those results. And in the majority of cases, it's statistics. So again, understanding the statistical part, using uh, best practices and approaches of trying to present the results in the simplest form. So this, the form that is simplest, but at the same time, that is very objective and information rich to achieve that balance. That will make the research uh, more effective, easier to communicate, easier for everyone to understand. One thing uh, which should always be remembered is that one of the most important aspects of data presentation is accuracy. So there are many other aspects, as we saw from the webinar, like the way it's communicated. There are even the aesthetical aspects of research. So if research is, let's say, created and then turned into a manuscript published in a journal, if it's just text, it is much harder for everyone to grasp and understand easy uh, compared to having a good data visualization uh, stack, having very, very intuitive graphs and the ways data is being presented. So there are many other aspects. As I said, there are even the technical aspects, different publication journals will require different types of data visualization, different technical aspects, different aesthetical aspects, but in the end, one of the most important aspects is being accurate. Research has always been about being trustworthy, about being credible, and about being objective. So that is one aspect that should never be forgotten. Whatever we present in data visualizations, whatever we present in tables, whatever we present in any other form of research results, it is always of paramount importance to be accurate and objective. This, this increases the trustworthiness and credibility of anyone's research and uh, 
it is vital for various pretty much all scientific branches so the key takeaways from uh, today's webinar we have two aspects that we discussed one of those aspects is statistics it is a branch of science that we use and i will uh, again focus on this term it is an applied branch of science a very practical branch of science so it's not just numbers and the uh, abstract forms it is very practical in terms of helping us understand the research problem get the answers to those research questions improve the way we communicate research with others improve the overall quality of the research to be able to effectively achieve all this it is important to understand the statistical methods why do we use them what answers can they provide to us so instead of being superficial in just writing out those methods in manuscripts it's also important to understand those methods if we don't understand them we don't understand the results obviously understanding the data is equally important so understanding the statistical methods understanding the data how is it collected what is the context around this data all these are very important in understanding our own research so it is always advised to try to understand as much as possible of these aspects even if you are not interested in statistics uh, by itself if you're interested in improving your research statistics can be a very very powerful tool then we have the data presentation which is uh, related to how we use statistics so statistical results are communicated much better if we have a good data presentation if we had good graphs good data visualization um, tables that are enriched with data that can be used to communicate these results much easier to everyone even the non-researchers so data presentation is all about being intuitive easy to understand but also being objective as i mentioned before we should never forget that the main goal of every data presentation is to be objective and accurate communication is one of the main key aspects in any research why because when we can communicate the results effectively when they're easy for everyone to understand then the research will have its maximal impact so if the research is not easy to understand if it's not uh, if it's not communicated in the right way then its impact can decrease this impact of data presentation of scientific communication is vital when communicating with key stakeholders in companies with research community with audience even with non-researchers it's very important to communicate the statistical results effectively because then logically it will be easy for everyone to understand the research and make the impact uh, that is supposed to make so these were the key takeaways of how we can use statistics and data presentation to not just make it easier for everyone to understand the research not just make it easier for us to create the results section of the manuscript or discuss the results but also to be as objective as possible and improve the quality of the research i will now uh i will now uh give the webinar the webinar dynamic to tomo and please feel free to ask any questions and we'll be happy to answer
Okay, thank you, uh, Dako, for uh, your wonderful presentation. And uh, now I will move on to the Q&A session. Actually, we have received uh, so many questions. So unfortunately, we cannot answer to all the questions. However, uh, we will try our best to answer as many questions as possible. So first question is, the, there are various data which are not accessible. Can you please share the various sources from we can get, so source from we can get data? That's a very good question because data is uh, essential in today's research. There is a lot of data created out there digitally for various branches of science. And this really depends on uh, the, the area of science itself and of course the specific domain where this data is collected. So there okay. are various... Uh, okay. Yeah, pretty gone. Okay. So, uh, there is a certain amount, and actually a lot of today's data in various research areas is in public domain. So it is freely accessible to everyone, but there are also certain areas where this data cannot be accessible to everyone due to ethical concerns. One good example is uh, uh, biomedical data. A certain amount of biomedical data, obviously, cannot be accessible to everyone, but there are also other, uh, other types of life science data, let's say, and even the biomedical that can be accessible. So it really depends on the specific domain. Uh, again, it depends on that domain. So if you're, let's say, in life science research, there are many uh, data repositories, which you can find online just by uh, let's say, typing publicly available public domain data and searching for data repositories. Some good examples are NCBI, so the US NCBI, uh, the European EMBL. There are also various Japanese, uh, Korean, uh, other Asian uh, data repositories, which also offer publicly available data. In social science also, so searching for data repositories with publicly available data uh, and looking for a license. So if, if the license of that data tells that it is available for reuse by anyone, uh, that, is, that is the case that data is open for anyone to use. But again, you can count that some types of data cannot be accessible to everyone. I hope that. Uh... Okay, uh, thank you for uh, answering the questions. The next question is about the data security. So, how do you address the data security when you conduct research? Yes, that's another fantastic question. So, when uh, the analysis is conducted, so anyone who is handling research data should be aware that even though the data is uh, more or less accessible, it is always important to keep that data secure. So one of the ways to keep the data secure is to know exactly where it's stored, how it's stored. So one aspect of data security is not to lose the data itself, right? So to, to make sure that it's uh, in the safe place. And this means understanding uh, the, the, the process of storing it. There are other ways of like cybersecurity, right? So meaning that data is stored on platforms that are uh, uh, that, that have their own specific security. And uh, another important aspect for researchers, especially, is to try to uh, understand the data in terms of if there are any sensitive, if there are any sensitive types of the data. Uh, in let's say the data set for for certain research and make special attention to uh, 
taking specific care so that this sensitive data is always secured and uh, special attention is paid to uh, the security of the sensitive data. So in my opinion, having a special focus on how the data is stored, where is it stored? Is there a specific layer of security like online cybersecurity around the data? Uh, making sure those are present is the best way to, to, to deal with data security, I would say. Okay, um, next question is the, about the tools or software. So which tool can be used to represent multiple angles? Or which stat statistical software can you recommend for good and beautiful pictorial dialogue? There, there are various, and there are actually uh, two main types of software. So this software, uh, is actually based on the fact that it can be easily accessible by anyone like point and click software. So programs where we can simply use a mouse, a computer mouse to uh, point and click different statistical methods. We still need to understand them in detail, right? It's just that it's easier to use. So that software is mostly meant for uh, non-researchers to non-statisticians uh, if, if I may be accurate and uh, it can be easily used so there are various types of free open source software like for example JAST which is uh, I believe created by one of the world's top universities uh, there are other software which are maybe uh, not free that have a, a certain uh, price. Hi, so, uh, Darko. Okay. Can you hear me? I think the, the, there's some you know, the connectivity issues, so I cannot hear okay. your answer. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. So uh, everything is resolved now, I hope. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, as yep. I said, there are various software. So some software is meant for non-statisticians. There are other software which is meant for uh, people who are interested specifically in statistics and data science, like R or Python. So these are actually programming languages that people need to learn to understand how to implement statistics and data science. But generally, uh, there is a variety of software. And uh, everyone who is interested in this area should uh, should try to understand the software itself. What is used for? What is its main purpose? So generally, every software has a main purpose or area where it's used. Okay. Any any additional questions? Okay, please let me know if there are any additional questions. Okay, you can post the questions in the chat and we will try to answer as much as possible. Okay, so I will check. Um, I will check some of the questions from the chat. So, what is the best statistical analysis to determine the correctness of chemical laboratory analysis? So there is a specific branch of research, which is uh, related to chemical lab and other laboratory experiments, which is called in vitro statistics. So it's a very 
specific branch of statistics. It's uh, slightly different than other branches. And it's relevant, uh, as I said, specifically to n vitro experiments, how these experiments are replicated. So that, that is a branch of statistics. There is a variety of methods. And uh, basically, the main placeholder there is in vitro statistics. So do you offer a short course on statistical methods? I believe Tomo should be as uh, able to answer that. Tomo, please let me know if you can hear me. Uh, yes, I can hear you, but the high can not be my present. And share my screen right now. Okay, okay. So please, please proceed with your candy session. Okay, so I will... Uh, so we have a question. Could you explain what do you mean by methods? So when you say methods, there are two types of methods uh, that we can uh, actually uh, see in uh, in the research and in manuscript. So one is the actual domain-based scientific methods, like what, what are the methods used to collect the data? What are the methods used to make those measurements in the research? But there are also statistical methods, like which type of test, which type of statistical test is used. One example is the t-test, right? So if we want to compare means, averages of the data, we can use the t-test. If we want to compare frequencies or counts, we can use another test, which is called the chi-square test. So when I say methods, I mean specific statistical methods that can help us answer specific research questions, like these hypothesis tests that I just mentioned. Okay. Uh, let me check other answers. So, uh, Okay, what, what skill do we need to have to know which particular statistical method is suitable for a particular data? And this is the, the internet weak internet connection uh, for me. So please continue to you know, the, the uh, answering the questions you have in the chat box. Okay, so this was a very interesting question. So what, what specific skills do we need to understand how to choose different methods, the different statistical methods? And uh, even though this might sound intimidating, like we need to understand some statistical methods, it's actually quite simple. There are very simple ways to determine which statistical methods we need to use. Like in the previous example, we need to understand what is the main research question. So if we if if we understand the research question like, is there a difference in averages between two populations, let's say, for some parameter, then we immediately know that we are comparing means that we need a test that is specifically designed for comparing means. One such test is called student t-test, as I mentioned before. So this is a good example of what specific skills do we need. We need this these skills to be able to uh, help us understand the research question. If we understand the research question, and on the other hand, we need to understand these tests. What do they tell us, right? So what does the t-test tell us? It tells us if there is a difference in means, right? So uh, those two aspects are key, I believe. On one side, understanding your own research, understanding uh, the research question, and on the other hand, simply understanding which method will help you answer that research question. And it's quite simple to find information about all these tests online. So by, by searching more information, let's say about high-square test or about regression, for example, uh, regression will tell us if there is association between two sets of data. Are they related to each other? And then we can use, for example, linear regression, because linear regression will tell us if there is association. So very simple, very simple ways to choose the right test. But again, 
we should always be careful to understand all these details to make sure they're valid and that then we can choose the right test. Okay. Uh, the next question, is it possible to get certificate for antenna? So I will leave to Tomo to answer that maybe in the chat or with the email. Or if if uh, if Tomo can also answer here. Yes. Okay. yes, we will go through all the questions uh, at a later date by Okay, okay. So what is the difference between predictors and risk factors? And uh, are they interchangeable in research? There is a difference between predictors and risk factors. They are essentially uh, related to each other, but there is a slight difference. The difference is predictor is anything, any sort of variable parameter that we can use to predict something, to predict some other parameter perhaps. For example, we can use uh, the amount of clouds to predict if it's going to rain, right? So that would be the predictor. It doesn't necessarily have to be related to any risk. When we say risk factor, it's a very specific uh, factor, like obesity is a risk factor for uh, cardiological diseases. So it's specifically related to risk of some disease, while predictor as a general term, it can be anything that has predictive value that can help us predict some other uh, aspect, but not necessarily related to the risk, okay? So another question is how to analyze qualitative data. So we discussed uh, we discussed uh, some ways, and again, uh, qualitative data. Sometimes we call it. Uh, we have different names like categorical data, binary data. So qualitative data also has a specific set of methods that are used to analyze. One of those ways is, as I said, we can analyze the frequencies and we can, for example, apply a chi-square test that I mentioned. There are other ways like applying a method called uh, binary logistic regression, which can be used to analyze, to try to predict a qualitative feature. There are many other methods, but generally, there's a specific branch of statistics that deals with uh, qualitative data. And uh, even if the data is qualitative, there is always a way to turn it into something that can be compared statistically. For example, if something is present or not, some, let's say, qualitative feature, it can be coded as yes or no, or one and zero. So there's always a way to represent that data, even as numbers, and then analyze it statistically. What are your recommendations for appropriate color coding? So my recommendation generally, I know we don't have much time, so I'll try to be quick with this answer, is for it to be intuitive as possible, for the colors to represent uh, the values in a simple and intuitive way. And one such method is called, uh, actually one such type of plot is called a heat map. So in the heat map, we can represent numbers using colors. And simply as the color scale increases or decreases, uh, the heat map will show that as color, as a, as a value decrease or value increase. Okay, so uh, we will try to answer as much as possible of, I, I see we, we have a lot of questions. So I will now uh, give it back to Tomo to uh, maybe get through com some comments from him. Uh, and also, of course, we'll try to answer as much as possible of your comments. And I would like 
to especially thank you for uh, being present at today's webinar and hope it was helpful to you. Looking forward to seeing you on uh, some of the next webinars. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much for your presentation. And I deeply uh, apologies for my internet connectivity issues. So I cannot, you know, the, moderate the Q&A session and form the entire presentation uh, today. So, uh, the, you know, the final uh, giveaway. Uh, I have a presentation, a special present for you all. The, all the attendees will receive the email tomorrow. And please check the link in the email. You will be able to use AJ's newly uh, launched AI powered tool uh, for free for 30 days. There is also a 10% discount offer that can be used for AJ services valid until the end of this year. And please note that the coupon code it's the same as the one distributed in the previous webinars. So if you have already used it, you cannot use it again. And the next webinar uh, is scheduled on July 26. The topic of the next seminar will be on journal selection. It is titled as journal selection to maximize your career potential. We will explain why selection of the journal is important and how it will affect your career path. We will send you another invitation and look forward to seeing you again. Lastly, I'd like to reiterate our appreciation to our presenter, Dalkor, and all attendees once again. And your feedback and questions are highly valuable to us. So please continue to share your thoughts and opinions. Uh, we will look forward to your continued support of AJE out of Springer Nature. And hopefully see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.